to I my sort of game plan is to yeah fight the best quickly get in and then get out like I don't yeah I want to have like a yeah I want to just give it a crack right now I feel like I'm in the prime years of my athletic performance I reckon I've got a couple of years to January 22nd, UFC 270. You'll be stepping into the octagon for the first time. Worley Alves, he will be your opponent. You know, when you got the offer, when you got that name, what was your reaction? I was stoked, to be honest, because I had, um, I've seen I've seen him fight before. And yeah, I knew he'd obviously had a few fights in the UFC. So yeah, for me to have him off the back is awesome. I couldn't have asked for a better starting opponent. Well, you know, a few yeah. fights is an understatement, man, because he's fought for a while in the UFC. He's a yeah. legit veteran. For sure. Yeah, I think he's been in the UFC longer than I've had professional fights. So, But, yeah, that's awesome. I think that is it's perfect, perfect um, story for me. So there's a lot of, you know, tape on him in the UFC. So what are your thoughts on him and, and the style that he possesses? I think his style is just super aggressive. He's a nice... Like he's nice kickboxing, like Brazilian style kickboxing, pretty aggressive. He likes to have like a solid fight. So I think it's going to be honest, I think it's a perfect matchup for me. He's going to come at me and try and land hard shots, a lot of kicks, and I'll be able to try and land counters. And yeah, just try. Yeah, I think it's perfect. Someone that's aggressive is always going to be the perfect matchup for me, I believe. Yeah, th- that's what I looked at it too, man, because. A lot of people, I don't know if they know you that well. I know you because I've been following you for years and yeah. years now. But a lot of the UFC fans that only watch the UFC, they have no idea. They only know the Alves, you know, the Alves that goes out there, kill or be killed, takes a lot of chances, and, and which puts him in a lot of danger. And oh. like, like you said, it is perfect for you, man. Like, you must have been like, man, why are they even putting me against him in my first fight? You know, like, they're helping me out. Yeah, that's what I feel like it is. I feel like they know that he's going to come at me and it will definitely bring the best out of me. So, yeah, per, for me, I was super excited about the opponent. And I truly can't wait to fight. Guys that enter the UFC, usually they want to build themselves up against other prospects. And, you know, like a Sean O'Malley, you know, you've seen what Sean O'Malley's been doing, right? He's been building himself up, taking certain fights that are not as dangerous as other guys that are calling him out. You know, do you feel... There's no time to waste for you, even though you're 25 years old. You just want to fight the best guys. Yeah, I'm a pretty competitive person. I know all, all, everyone in the UFC is, I guess. But yeah, I want to. I my sort of game plan is to, yeah, fight the best quickly, get in and then get out. Like I don't. Yeah, I want to have like a. Yeah, I want to just give it a crack right now. I feel like I'm in the prime years of my athletic performance. I reckon I've got a couple of years to. Well, I've got at least a couple of years in my prime. So, yeah, I'm ready to go now and I want to fight the best people I can. I'll always take probably the highest ranked opponent before I take the easiest opponent. Now, you're located in Western Australia in Perth, somewhat isolated from what I know. I don't know too much about Australia from the rest of the country. How is How was it when you got back to when you got back home after the Contender Series? It was, um, I don't know, so, yeah, Australia, they're making it extremely difficult to, like, get in and out. So we had to do, I had to do a two-week quarantine in Sydney in a hotel. And then also, when then coming from Sydney back to WA, I had to do another two weeks in a, just at home quarantine. So I had to do, like, a whole, a whole four weeks of basically being isolated which is insane. It's crazy to think you have to do a two-week quarantine in the one side of the country and then do another two weeks on the other side. But, yeah, they don't make it easy. But we made it out, hoping, fingers crossed, that is the last time we'd ever have to do a quarantine. But I guess you never really know. But I guess it's just part of it. Unfortunately, I've, all, I've always wanted to be like a fighter as a career path. And that just now that it's a bit more difficult, but it is what it is. I guess you sacrifices have to come along with it definitely how is it now like in the street you know in the community yeah in perth to be in perth we're pretty lucky we haven't had 
I think literally we haven't had we have a case and everyone loses their mind. So we have one case every now and then, and it's pretty much yeah as per usual in the community. But it's just that getting in and out of our state in WA is a bit tougher. But yeah, it is what it is. We're in the community; it's fine. There's I think people who are happy just to stick around in Perth are happy with how it is because everything's opened up and we can just live our lives as usual. But for someone that wants to get in and out of the state, it's a bit difficult, but it is what it is. Have they changed that yet? Like the the quarantines that you could just do it at home in Perth without just going through Sydney? At the moment, I think you have to sort of quarantine if you come in and out. But as of the 5th of February, they say they're going to, they're just going to open it up. So that's all. Yeah. Where the fights, my fights 22nd of January, we're just going to stick around in the U S for a bit. And then hopefully I think we're coming back on the 7th of Feb. So hopefully we can just cruise back in and then it's uh, fingers crossed. You never know, but hopefully at that point it's just like, um, traveling as per usual. I believe you're the only UFC fighter out of Perth currently. Currently. Yeah. Yeah. Currently. Right. And, uh, has anything changed with you, you know, in Perth, like going around, or is it just business as usual? Nah, it's just business as usual. The occasional people sort of, they're obviously the diehard fans that would delve into a bit of contender series that get behind me, but no, nah, it's business as usual, same thing. The gym's pumping, everyone in the gym is pumping, but yeah, business as usual. I look forward to, yeah, getting it done again. Scrappy MMA, your gym, you know, talk about the coaches for the people that never, you know, that don't know anything about you and the team. We have a, Ben Vickers is the head man at Scrappy MMA and he's, yes, he has built a, just such a good, I don't know, it's just such a good culture. Everyone at the gym, there's no, no one's like, we're just competing along with each other rather than against each other. Everyone's trying to build themselves up. We've got good fighters, but Everyone understands that the most important thing about a team is your training partners. And if they're getting better as well, you're getting better. So everyone's just trying to, yeah, we, we're a strong, solid team and we just try and build each other up. A lot of hard, hard work, but also like we're trying to, we're all trying to get better rather than just trying to get the one or two people better. Definitely. And any new additions to your regimen, like anything that you've been doing that you weren't doing in the past? Not a whole lot, to be honest. I have been, one thing I have added to the regimen is um, Pilates, like on the Reformer. It's, a, <laughs> it's something that I feel like it helps a lot with like your core stability. But yeah, just sort of added that. It's not, it's not a diet, like a crazy hard workout, but it definitely helps with your core stability, that sort of thing. But apart from that, it's just same old business as usual, trying to get better at, learning new techniques and trying to get the body more conditioned to fight harder. Yeah, I don't think um, there's a problem with adding anything to your to your regimen nah. because you never know what works for you. Yeah, it's always good to try different stuff, see if it, work. if it works, keep it. If it doesn't, just on to the next. But yeah, number one thing is, of course, training hard with the team and trying to work on techniques that you can use in a like combat situation. Now, before the Contender Series victory, you won nine straight with finishes. You go three rounds, seeing the judges, getting those feelings again. You Actually, you never had those feelings. That was the first time you ever went to the judges as a pro. How did how has that benefited you? It was, at, to be honest, at the time, I was a bit like, oh, I want to get the finish. But as soon as, within five minutes, I realized that it was probably the best thing that I could ask for. Going to, it's just a different feeling, you know, knowing that you can push that hard. Next time, if I when I do go three five rounds again, I'll be definitely be more ready. I hadn't been there before, so it's sort of untested waters. But yeah, I, I'm super blessed. I was able to go the three rounds, and yeah, I embrace it. I look forward to going three five rounds, three to or five rounds next time. I can't wait. How did you feel about your conditioning in that fight? Yeah, to be honest, I felt I felt pretty good. There was definitely times in the fight where I was a bit lazy and. Knowing now that I, I definitely think my conditioning will be better, just some things I did lazily in the fight. But yeah, and no, I was happy with the conditioning. Of course, you can always you can always improve in conditioning in other areas, which I feel like I have. But no, I was happy with how the fight went. Learned a lot, so going to three rounds was really a blessing. 
Yeah, you don't really know if it works until you test it, right? You can feel confident about it, but once you test it and you know it works, then you feel that confidence really set in, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, going that three, it was definitely like untested waters, but now I know like it's not that hard. It's quite easy on three rounds, so we'll be good next time. Last time you went a few weeks ahead of the the show. Are you doing the same thing this time? Yeah, we're pretty much doing the pretty much the exact same routine. Two weeks, we get there almost two weeks to the day of the fight, which was it worked perfect. You know, you know, there's no stress about the travel. You just get there acclimatize get into the swing of things training eating good and yeah one week down and then you're just itching to fight and travel like you don't have to worry about traveling so yeah two weeks out just get into the swing of the american lifestyle <laughs> what is the american lifestyle <laughs> it's, it's very relaxed for us it's just basically almost eat sleep train repeat you know that's pretty much all we did which is awesome. At this time, we won't be as hot. In Ve- We're going to go to Vegas, use the PI. Won't be as hot this time. So it'll be nice. It's, it's been so hot here in Perth. So it'll be nice to get a bit of cooler weather, I think. The PI, what have you used? What have you utilized there? We were just basically every day, we just get in. The gym was, of, of course, pretty impressive. Like it's a cool gym, massive, so much space. And there was not really anyone else there. So. Yeah, we trained there and then just the recovery stuff. Like we, I straight after training, we'd get in the ice baths, the sauna. They give you they give the food, like they give you all sorts of good food to help with the weight cut. But it was it was just like a nice facility to work hard, recover, and then just relax, hang out, go home and eat some food. Yeah, and you don't have to pay for none of it, which is the most beautiful nah, part. Yeah. Yeah, so it sort of makes sense for us. We're, the fight's in LA, but we're going to go to Vegas for the, the week, the first week, just because it's, yeah, as you said, it's free. It's an awesome facility. Like, why not? How do you see yourself picking up your first win in the UFC, man? You've been devastating people on the regional scene. You had a great performance on the Contender Series. You just feel like it's just levels that you're going to reach now. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good fight, to be honest. I think Wall is the perfect, yeah, he's the perfect person to come at me, have a good hard fight i think he's i think there's definitely a chance that i get the the knockout if he comes at me too hard but yeah i'm down i'm ready to go three rounds i enjoyed going three rounds last time so god i'm gonna try and hit him pretty hard over and over again and it's on him if he sticks around all right Uh, a couple more questions before i let you go man uh yeah the first one you know sparring footage you know recently there was this whole situation with Francis Ngannou and and Cyril Gan Cyril's team released some footage from back in the day of them sparring but it was highlights of Cyril doing well against Ngannou yeah how do you feel about people releasing video from training without like consent it's a strange one I think it's sort of yeah I don't know I haven't really thought about it I think if they're gonna, it doesn't really. I think at the end of the day, if they're gonna have a fight, it doesn't really matter. I think you, if yeah, as you say, it depends what you see of the sparring footage. If there's just little snippets, you have no idea what will really happen. I think whatever. I don't think there should be rules about it. I think getting, I think getting someone a video of the sparring in the first place it might be a bit strange, but a fight and sparring and a fight is completely different things, you know. Have you ever uh, fought anybody that you used to spar? I have fought um, Dean Abramos. I fought him in the amateur circuit in Perth. And then we, after we fought, we did get some sparring together. And then we actually fought earlier in my pro career. So it's a bit strange, but it was, it's business at the end of the day. Like, yeah, sparring and fighting, two completely different things. And yeah, it's just business when it's time to fight. Now, what what do you think uh, MMA fans, they obsess about too much that fighters really don't care about? Yeah, that's a good question. What are they? MMA fans. Ooh, that's a tough one. You know, like, for example, let me give you an example. Like, undefeated records. Like, MMA fans are really obsessed about that. Yeah, I was probably thinking the records. I don't think it's as big a thing as boxing, but the record is one that, it's yeah, like, but I think when you have a loss, sometimes it, it's probably a better thing for you in your career. Not many people go the whole way through undefeated, rarely ever. Yeah, so probably that. 
the record. But yeah, I'm not sure what else. What are the things that the fans stress over? There's a lot of things. If you go, you're not There's really a... a social media guy too much, right? So you don't really see it. No, I try and tend. I tend to not stick around on the social media for too long. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know what 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 else. What other things do you think? I think there's yeah. a lot of like, uh, you know, they target certain fighters. They obsess over certain fighters, like you know, like their actions and and what they do. They don't look at them as like human beings, you know, in some ways. Yeah, right. Yeah, I see that. Just like yeah, that's interesting. Have you ever gotten a weird like fan interaction before? Uh sometimes, sometimes, just on like. Not in person. Sometimes on Instagram, you get some like funny ones, and it's interesting. But yeah, I tend not to really look too deep into it. I think uh, when you get to into the US, I'm sure you're going to get all sorts of crazy people that are reaching out to you and <laughs> saying things. I try and just block that stuff out. All right. Um, one last thing. <laughs> um, PTSD, or some people like to call it like shell shock. In, in combat sports, yeah. you know, it could be from like injuries, it could be from, you know, brawls or damage or, or even crazy weight cuts. Have you experienced this in the past or seen anything like this in other fighters? No, I haven't. There's, of course, you do see the some fighters where you feel like they're a bit slurry and they're like saying things a bit. I think at any point, if you, for me, I think health is number one. If you I ever, if I ever felt like I had started having any like slurring of words or rem memory issues, I would probably seriously reconsider this career path because I don't think it's worth it. The 10 years or 15 years of competing for the rest of your life. But yeah, it's, a, it's obviously a tough sport with the, all the head knocks and the weight cut. It's a lot. So I think monitoring where you're at with your health is probably extremely important. And you haven't made the decision if it's is your career in fighting worth possibly down the line having serious issues. It's quite obviously a scary, scary thought, but it's definitely something that's extremely real in this sport.